Hello, this is Dr. Joe Adragna, Medical Advisor to the Public Health Director for Montrose County. I'm with you today for the April 27, 2021 Montrose County COVID-19 update. Let's get started. First off, prevention. If you don't have a contraindication to vaccination, please get yourself vaccinated to protect yourself, your family, and your community. Who is eligible for vaccine? We are still in CDPHE or State Public Health Office phase two, and that means anybody in Colorado who's age appropriate can receive the vaccine. We have three vaccines available, Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen. Pfizer is age approved for 16 or older. Moderna or Janssen are 18 and older. Many of you have heard that the Janssen vaccine was recently on hold while the CDC and FDA reviewed some concerns around possible safety issues. They completed their review last week and they have both come out and issued instructions to resume vaccination using the Janssen vaccine. If you remember from my prior reporting, I held out confidence for the Janssen vaccine and I was not worried about it. I felt that the benefit of the vaccine significantly outweighed any risk that uh, came from the vaccine and it appears that the federal agencies have uh, looked at the data and have come to the same conclusion. The two agencies have determined, and I quote, use of the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine should be resumed in the United States. The FDA and CDC have confidence that this vaccine is safe and effective in preventing COVID-19. And the FDA has determined that the available data show that the vaccine's known and potential benefits outweigh its known and potential risk in individuals 18 years of age and older. And they go on to talk about how there is a small chance of TTS, which we'll talk about here in a moment, occurring and what to do about it. There's some additional information for vaccine providers as well. And if you'd like to see more, I have a link on the PowerPoint slide so that you can find more information out on CDC's website. So what is this TTS? It stands for thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome. Thrombosis is a blood clot and thrombocytopenia is a low platelet count. It's diagnosed by meeting all four of the following criteria. The person would have received a COVID vaccine, specifically the Johnson & Johnson, a, otherwise known as the Janssen vaccine, or the AstraZeneca vaccine four to 30 days prior to their presentation with this concern. Number two, they have to have a blood clot, venous or arterial, and often cerebral or abdominal. Cerebral means in the, in the brain or in the head. Number three is thrombocytopenia, so they have to have low platelet counts. And number four is a positive PF4 hit or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia ELISA. It's a blood test. The incidence of this is extremely rare in the words of the American Society of Hematology. And the American Society of Hematology says that the risk of death and serious outcome of COVID-19, the actual infection, including blood clots, yes, blood clots happen from COVID-19. We've seen that right here in Montrose as a consequence or a complication of contracting COVID-19 infection. The American Society of Hematology says that that risk, that risk of death and serious outcomes from infection far outweigh the risk of thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome, in their words, possibly associated with highly efficacious vaccines. That's a lot to take in. Basically what they're telling you in one sentence is that the risk of getting COVID-19 is higher than the risk of contracting TTS and that these vaccines are very effective at what they do, preventing you from getting COVID-19. So for those healthcare professionals with us, there's a link on the last slide so that you can look into more information of, that the American Society of Hematology has to say about how to diagnose this and treat it to our non-medical professionals uh, watching this today. Like I said early on, I have full faith in this vaccine. I think that the benefit far outweighs the risk and the risk of contracting one of these clots is extremely small. Remember, this was found through about a half dozen cases after seven million plus Janssen doses had been administered. These typically occurred in younger females. And so some of the information that vaccine providers are asked to present is that just that, that if you're a young female, that there may be another vaccine that you might be interested in, such as the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, which we have not seen this TTS uh, occur with. So moving on, um, you've heard me uh, uh, say it many times, I'm a believer in the vaccines, I think they work, and I think it's our way of moving forward as a civilization to have this protection. But nonetheless, uh, the K-12 
County is holding a vaccine clinic this Thursday, April 29th. It's going to be the Moderna uh, vaccine, and it's only for booster doses. We're trying to wrap up some of the uh, vaccine series that we started with folks. And for all the other participants or those people that would like to get vaccine uh, series started, we would ask you to seek out some of the other vaccine providers in the county as the county public health department will um, not hold any additional scheduled vaccine clinics at this time unless we see that demand outpaces our community supply. However, if you look on this slide, we have many community providers across the entirety of the county that includes pharmacies and medical offices who can provide vaccination to you or your loved ones if they are so interested. You can go to MontroseCountyJIC.com, that's MontroseCountyJIC.com, for more information and to find these vendors out um, uh, along with their contact information. Let's look at vaccine distribution across the country. We now are at nearly 231 million administered doses. Just think about that for a moment. That's quite a feat. There have been 290 plus million delivered doses and uh, as I said about 231 million administered doses. So of, of um, of those, 95.8 million are fully vaccinated with 140.9 million people having received at least one dose. That's 42.5% of the U.S. population. Just imagine, 42.5% of the U.S. population in just a few months have received at least one dose. And the breakdown on that is that about 139 million are uh, greater than or equal to age 18. So that means there's just a, a, a small relative sample of those less than 18 that have received a vaccine at this point, that being Pfizer. And then of those 141 million administered doses, about 45 million are in populations age 65 or older. And this represents 81.7% of the population greater than or equal to 65 years of age. I think that's an incredible number. And I, I hope that with that, we continue to see um, good hospital um, uh, vacancies that we don't see uh, our loved ones getting severely ill and ending up needing hospital level care. 67.7 percent of those age 65 or older have received full immunization. That's nearly 37 million people. Um, if we look to the state, that's shown in the bottom table here. So as of April 26, we're looking at 1,355 authorized vaccine providers enrolled with CDPHE having given out 2.5 million one single doses and 1.7 million Coloradans fully immunized with a cumulative doses administered of, of just over 4 million doses. So quite a feat to have accomplished in a few months just right here in Colorado. You know, Montrose County kind has of been part of that. If we look to the state, you see the three different types of vaccines that have been administered, Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen. And we see that Janssen was paused uh, in about middle of April, so we don't see any more green columns, but that should resume as Janssen is now authorized for administration. If you look to our region, the West region, which Montrose is a part of, Montrose continues to lead in the total number of vaccines administered, now with over 25,000 total doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered. And our communities around us are doing a wonderful job as well. And Delta at, at nearly 19,000, Gunnison at nearly 17,000, San Miguel at um, just about 8,400, Uray at over 4,000, and Hinsdale at um, 740 vaccines administered. So everybody in the region is doing what they can to uh, offer this to their community and take care of each other. And they're doing a great job with that. If we look at the difference between the percent of doses distributed to Montrose County and its relative percent of state population, we are in the negative at this point with negative 0.07, essentially zero. And, and basically, we, we likely would have gotten more vaccination uh, doses had we uh, had increased demand. But with the pause with Janssen, we did see a reduction in interest. Um, many people were holding out for the single dose option, which Janssen offers. And with the pause, uh, they, of course, had to wait. And so now that these are resumed, I do encourage those who were waiting for the Janssen to go ahead and get signed up either at community clinics, pharmacies, or um, through other vendors. So if we look at the percent of eligible county, Montrose County population that's immunized with one or more doses, we're at 42%. So 42% of eligible county populations immunized with one dose or more. And of our county, of those eligible, 36.3% of our county is fully immunized. So let's look at status. Uh, there has been an update to CDPHE's website. If you haven't gone there, you might want to look at this. 
they show now by county whether that county has additional local public health orders in place relative to COVID-19. So you can see that Montrose Delta and Mesa County do not have additional local public health orders in place. San Miguel, Uray, Gunnison do have additional local public health orders in place. These, uh, these can range from additional mask mandates to additional uh, public health restrictions related to COVID-19. One week positivity is showing that our uh, our our area is is in le is blue, which is less than or equal to five percent of tests coming back positive. Our one week average positivity also shown in blue for us and our neighbors. That's less than or equal to five percent. If we look at number of days of decrease in our stable hospital admissions by county of residents, Montrose continues to be in the twelve to fourteen day category, with Delta uh, sharing that categorization with Mesa County dropping just a bit into the yellow at eight to eleven days. If we look to uh, the three metrics that CDPHE followed for quite some time, that was one week cumulative incidents, uh, Montrose County one week average positivity, and then decline in our stable hospitalizations. We see that Montrose, since last week when we reported to you, does have an increase in the one week cumulative incidents from 42 to 56. Remember that's 56 per 100,000 population. And our one week average positivity went from 1.6 to 2.7. Hospitalizations staying good at 14 days of declining or stable hospitalizations. So a little bit of increased incidents, a little bit of increased positivity. Now when we look to our surrounding counties, this is not the West region but multiple counties that are around Montrose, we do see that overall the cumulative new cases in the last 14 days is less than as that less than what I reported last week. So moving in the right direction. However, Montrose, if you see, is highlighted in red, this latest column, that does indicate that we have an increase in the 14-day case count per 100,000 compared to last week. Uh, we are at 108 k cases per 100,000 population over the 14-day period ending uh, April 26th. Whereas last week when I reported we are at 82. So a bit of an incline there. Fortunately, Delta coming down, Montezuma coming down, Mesa County going up, Gunnison up just slightly from last week, Uray is up as well. Summit, La Plata, Eagle, San Miguel, Pitkin, San Juan, and Garfield are either flat or down from last week. If we look to the West region, remember this is more narrowly defined by CDPHE as Delta, Gunnison, Montrose, San Miguel, Uray, and Hinsdale. We do see that the West region is declining on its three-day average daily incidents. That's shown in the black line on top. And the the green line in the bottom indicates that the daily change in the slope of that smoothing trend line, that black line above, is going down. It's in the negative. So that's good to see. That's, that, that correlates with the smattering of counties that we looked at showing uh, fewer cases in the last 14 days as of April 26 compared to what we reported last week. So overall, regions moving in the right direction. We're going down in cases. Even though Montrose went up slightly compared to last week, the region as a whole here is going down. So hopefully uh, Montrose will reverse that trend and, and continue to move down with the rest of our surrounding colleagues. Now, when we look at COVID variants, we continue to only have one variant found in the Montrose population, and that remains the B117 or the UK variant. Last week, I reported that we had five variants, five cases of this variant found. That number has not changed this week. Um, I've previously reported on the South African variant, the California variant, the Brazil variant. Those are not found in our county, but they are found um, in many other counties uh, in Colorado. And I'll just quote this again from CDC. They say, so far, studies suggest that antibodies generated through vaccination with currently authorized vaccines recognize these variants. So the good news is the vaccine works against the variants. Get the vaccine. You'll protect yourself against these variants. When we look at the seven-day average of COVID-19 cases in Colorado by date reported to the state, we do see an increase from uh, last week. You can look to the bottom right of the graph here and see that that is increasing on a seven-day average. When we look at Colorado as a whole, uh, we do see that we um, have a trend line, that black line, which is our three-day average daily incidence smoothing trend line, is just barely starting to trend in the negative, but just for a day or two here. Previous to that, it was actually red, which indicates it was growing, and we had just a, a little bit of time around the middle of the month we're in the negative territory. So the state did uh, go up uh, a bit in case counts. Uh, from our report last week and then it looks like at this point is starting to stabilize that growth and hopefully continues a downward trend. 
When we look at hospital demand, that's shown in the bottom right. We do see that statewide we are seeing an increase in hospital demand for confirmed cases and also PUI status. When we look to our acute care bed use, it is up 1% on a seven day average from what was la re reported last week. And if we look to the percent of ICU beds in use, that is up 1% from last week on a seven day average. Overall, hospital demand increasing for COVID cases across the state. Okay, so guys, this is our last community update in this format. It's been an honor to serve Montrose County and to work with some of really amazing people in our uh, public servant service uh, departments and agencies. I'd like to extend my warmest thank you and appreciation for all the sacrifice that these folks have given in service to our community. Um, I, I won't spend uh, this this time uh, going through a very lengthy list of thank yous and appreciation notes, uh, although that is due. More information in the future can be found by going to MontroseCountyJIC.com. That's MontroseCountyJIC.com. You can also look at CDPHE's COVID-19 data uh, set that they have available. Also, CDC Wonder and CDC Data Tracker are useful resources that you can uh, further research how we're doing and how um, our communities around us are doing. Overall, uh, Montrose will do just fine. Please continue the vaccine efforts. If you're sick, stay home. Please do not go to work. Don't go out and get other people ill with whatever you have. Seek, med seek out medical care when that's appropriate by first contacting your primary care provider and letting them know what's going on so that they can best assist you. And of course, if you have an emergency situation, seek out emergency care as you normally would. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunities to have uh, served, and I hope that you have found these informational sessions useful to you. Once again, in the future, go to MontroseCountyJIC.com for more information and stay safe.